Wednesday session next week. <coughs> you good? So next week, not this week, but the following, I send an email. Let's have another Wednesday session. So I can uh, give a few more examples and maybe help with your project. Or uh, if you have questions, I can answer them. Is that okay? Good. I think we have uh, two topics today to deal with. The first one is called um, design of Sometimes I call this quite a lot in, in control systems and it's a big help after you are doing the design of your control. So what this, what this does is, you know, you probably have witnessed
story. And it will go at the end to that point, except it will take its time. So here's my proposal. Instead of giving a step input, why not give this to the aircraft as, a, as, a, as, a, as an input? In other words, why not make this YC? Why are we making it a step input? Instead, let's give not a step input, but something like that as an input to YC. Because I know the airplane can only do this anyway. So let's give this as the input over here. Okay? Good, but you can't tell the pilot to, to give the velocity slowly. Or why should the pilot or the user be dealing with this thing? So instead, what we do is the following. We put the pilot or the user over here. And in between, we put a filter on a low pass filter. Okay, it's a low pass filter. What does a low pass filter do? It passes the low frequencies in a signal and removes the high frequencies. Okay? So what does it mean? It does this. It does a, it has a following drop. Let's call this YC and let's call this one YC prime. Okay? The low pass filter does that. <coughs> Fine. If you give a set input like this, one, uh, zero, one, it takes this signal and smooths it out and turns it into something like that. If it's a first order system, it turns it like that. And this would be y c prime. So it smooths out the strong signals, okay? the high frequency signals. The high frequency are these edges over here. So they are smoothed out and you get a smooth signal. And after that, because now this is what your controller will see, you are expecting your airplane to actually follow this line. It will be a lot easier for your aircraft, I mean for your controller. Because here, your controller will see at the first second, it will see a large error over here. Because in one second, at this one critical time here, when the input comes, you have suddenly a big jump from one to the other. And suddenly you see a large error over here. And that error will, of course, cause a lot of problems in your, in your control, right? You might overshoot, you might be going too slow, and so on. So the airplane will do this anyway, the controller. So let's give a control, uh, control input that smooths your input out, okay? So it smooths it out. So low pass filter means the following. This is a filter, okay? What does it do? It, it passes the low frequencies and it removes the high frequencies. So, where is this business coming from? Low pass, low frequency, high frequency business. Now, if you remember, you can um, you can express a periodic signal uh, as a Fourier series. You remember, any periodic signal can be expressed as a Fourier series in Fourier series, basically. So, Fourier series, if you remember, it has sines and cosines in it. You remember that, just sines and cosines. And you have, and you're setting these sines and cosines in terms of frequencies, you set it up in terms of frequencies, Fourier transform, Fourier series. Let's look it up, okay? Any periodic signal might look like this, so this is supposed to be a periodic signal. You can write this periodic signal as a combination of sines and cosines. You 
you add them together, you obtain this. That's what a Fourier series is. Do you remember that? So you have a high, fr uh, low frequency over here, high frequency signal over here. You have a low frequency over here, and you add them together, you obtain this. This is what they call a Fourier series. Okay. Now this is for periodic signals. There's also something called Fourier transform. It's a similar thing, except the signal doesn't have to be periodic. Okay? It can be non periodic. Non -periodic. What it does is that it assumes that that piece of um, signal, uh, although it's not periodic, it assumes that it is periodic and does not transform, and meanwhile, it separates the different frequencies in the system. So what I'm trying to say is that if you had a signal that looks like this, which is not even periodic, it will try to fit in sine and cosine frequencies, and add them together try to re-obtain this signal, okay? So at this periodic signal, this one, this one, these are shines and cosines with different amplitudes and different frequencies. You add them together and you obtain this signal. Any signal there is can be separated into its, into sines and cosines with different amplitudes and different frequencies. This is what we call a Fourier transform, okay? If you don't remember that, Please go back in your calculus. I'm sure you have some Fourier series. Go and see Fourier series what it does. It takes a periodic signal, divides it into sines and cosines with different frequencies and amplitudes, adds them together, and that's your Fourier series. Okay? Now, if, as you see, you have different frequencies embedded in that signal. Okay? A low pass filter passes the low frequencies, like this one and this one, and removes these high frequencies from your system, okay? So this signal has high frequencies and low frequencies. It will pass the low frequencies and remove the high frequencies. That's the job of a low pass filter. Pass the low frequencies. How do you find the low frequencies? Well, you can separate a signal into its frequencies using Fourier transforms or Fourier series. Then remove the fast frequencies and then pass the low frequencies to the other side. Okay? Now, if you look into a, into a step input, this step input has quite high frequency jumping from here to here. Can you imagine, in order to re establish this, you probably have to have this signal, and then you probably have to have this signal, and then you probably have to have another low frequency. Uh, pass frequency over here in order to regenerate this part. So a low pass filter will simply remove the high frequencies and just have this one low frequency. So send this through a low frequency signal, a um, low pass filter signal, you would obtain something like this. So we can write simple low. This low pass filter can be very Sophisticated. I mean, you know, electrical engineers use filters all the time in, in circuits and in a lot of things. Okay. Signal, uh, signal processing requires a lot of um, signal manipulation. There's also something called a high pass filter. A high pass filter does the opposite, it removes the low pass and sends over the high pass signals. So it's called a high pass filter. There's something called a band pass filter, which, removes, which only passes a certain uh, rate of frequencies. Okay? So we can have a lot of complicated filters over here, a lot of sophisticated filters over here that can only pass the low frequencies. Okay? So that's the idea. A simple low pass filter can be a first order filter that just does this. Okay, takes the step input and, and turns it into that. That would be a first order signal. Actually, let me put 
property, it would look like that. Okay? That would be a first order signal. A second order low pass filter, a typical low pass filter we would use in these kind of uh, controllers might look like this. Do you see the difference? This is going like this. This is the typical first order filter. First order low pass. And this is this is this is more a second order type response. lot more sophisticated low pass filter. Now here's the question of course, what if the pilot gives this input? What if this is the input? What, how will the low pass filter react to that? Well, if there are not many high frequencies in the signal, it will just pass this signal as it is. It might just pass it as it is, so the low pass filter might be actually just doing that. So because there are no high frequencies in this, it is already a low frequency signal. You can see that here, it is a high frequency. So a low pass filter does something very nice. If the signal is coming, the command signal is coming fast, it will just slow it down. If the, if the command is coming slowly, it will just let it through as this. And that's exactly what we want, right? You don't want your controller to immediately see a jump in the command because then you will see a large error. It will be multiplied with k, and your controllers will start moving a lot. Your controls will start moving immediately. Although you know you cannot follow a step input, you know your aircraft cannot go from 600 kilometers per hour to 800 kilometers per hour in 0.1 seconds. You can You know you cannot do it. You can give a command. But then your controller will struggle a lot in order to go there. But why do that to your controller? Well, you can just send it through a command filter and it will go smoothly to the place. So the first command that will go from 600 kilometers per hour, you will probably just get something like 601, 602, 603, 4, 5, etc. No, it gives it slowly. It will take it nicely. 800 kilometers per hour, not jump. Okay? So, this low pass filter here is sometimes called a command filter. Because we are filtering the command. We are filtering the command. It's called a command filter. Okay? Any, any questions to that? Uh, if we are blazing the high frequencies, uh, we are using some amplitudes, right? Yeah. So yes. there will be some error with the input and the, after the low pass filter. Your system will start seeing the red lines over there. So it, as far as your controller is concerned, the command is the red line, not the blue line anymore. This is not the command anymore to your computer. Okay, okay. But yeah. I'm saying that uh, with the red one and the blue one, there will be some error. Well, yes, there's an error, but you don't, do you, I mean, you can't do this anyway. What I'm trying to say is that even if you give this, uh, give this, if, even if you want to jump from 600 kilometers per hour to 800 kilometers per hour, you know your aircraft cannot do it, there will be an error anyway. So why give this large input to your controller and to give it a difficult time? when you know your controller cannot do it anyway. In other words, it would be silly to expect an aircraft to respond to a step input. So it cannot, right? So there will be an error in your controller. So instead of giving the error to the controller, give the input slowly to your controller. You might of course say, tell it to the pilot. Allow him to give the input slowly to the autopilot. Okay? You can do that, of course. But instead of the pilot giving the input slowly, <coughs> tell the pilot, give what you want, the aircraft will slowly move. It. Okay? Um, understand my point? Yeah, but at the end, at the end of the 
the mistake response. That, that there will be no error. There will be no error. No, no, no. no patch filter goes to the exact same point. It removes the high frequencies, but not down to it. We'll still go to the same. So this is, this is where our is. Yes. Is there any delay on the response? That's good. Kind of what I'm trying to explain. If this is your step input, and the airplane does only this, you going to delay the response? <coughs> yes, of course. The airplane can do this. Okay. So, what I'm trying to do is, let's put a filter and design a filter such that the aircraft can follow this signal. And now there's no delay anymore. Okay? Where am I doing this? I'm doing this way in the command. Not in the control, way in the command. I'm playing with the command that the pilot put so that you don't have to. This is how you design a command filter. You look at what your airplane can actually do. Because this is this depends on what airplane you have. If it's a fighter airplane, it can go fast very quickly. Or let's say this is an angle command. Okay, an angle. Let's say you say you want to have a pitch angle of 40 degrees in one second. Can you do it? With a step input, you can do it. If it's a passenger airplane, it will do it slowly, let's say in 10 seconds. So it might look like that. If it's a fighter airplane, you might actually be doing it like this. So when you design your command filter now, you say, okay, what do I have? Do I have a fighter airplane or a slow moving airplane? Small, slow moving airplane. Okay, let's use this command filter. Because I know my aircraft will respond to this. I have a fighter. Okay, let's use this command filter. Because I know my fighter can respond to this. But I know no airplane in the world can respond to a set input. So put some command filter there that matches the performance of your vehicle. Okay? In fact, what we really want is that if you give um, Maybe I'm putting a low pass filter, and although the pilot wants this, with the airplane, it goes through a low pass filter and the airplane only does this move slowly. And you think, oh, the airplane is too heavy, it cannot move, blah, blah, blah. No. I'm taking away the high frequencies. So the airplane just moves slowly. So what do I do? I put a low pass filter that is really slow. Go to the same point, but very slowly. And the airplane just follows that. <coughs> because as far as the airplane, the controller is concerned, YC prime is the input, it's not YC. Understand? 
So you can slow down the command that is coming from the user as much as you want using a low pass filter. So in other words, you could take a big airplane and make it move really slowly using a low pass filter, although the pilot is trying to do that. You can do the same thing to an F-16. You can take an F-16, which is very maneuverable, put a low pass filter to the command, and the F-16 will move like a passenger airplane. Because the command that goes into the controller is really slow. Because you took away the high frequencies. Understand the concept? So the, the, the F-16 might now move like a little Boeing 737. Not a little, but a big one, right? So what you want with the low pass filter is that the output should be followed without much delay. You want to follow this thing. So you can design a filter here so that the output can be followed by zero current. Okay? Therefore, we call this sometimes the reference, um, the reference model. We call this the reference model. Because it's like the reference that we would like to follow. We don't like to follow the fast signals. We don't want to follow really a step input that doesn't even exist. We can't not follow step input. We cannot follow a very fast input. The pilot can give any step fast input you want. We slow it down so that the aircraft follows that blue bar. And now I'm in a position where I say I can design a blow line the way I want, and the airplane will fly accordingly. So this is almost like a reference to how the airplane should fly. Okay, this is a reference to how the airplane should fly. Another name for it is command filter, as I said. Okay, there are a few names for this command filter. I'm giving you this terminology so that if you read it somewhere, you're gonna be surprised if you see a reference filter. Oh, what is that? It's a it's a low pass filter, and this is a command filter. Okay, and because sometimes this is we can do a lot of sophisticated models in here. It is we are following a certain model. Sometimes this is also called model following. Okay, we are following a certain. The airplane is model is, is following a certain model. I mean, this is all independent from the control, right? I mean, the control is still st supposed to stabilize. Still wants to follow the command wisely. But you can also play with the command itself over here. So if the command is coming fast, you can slow it down. Can you make the command faster? For example, let's do the opposite. Let's take a passenger airplane and try to make the inputs faster so that the commercial airplane flies like, like an F-16. Can you do that? I mean, I told you, you can take the F-16, slow down the command, and make it fly like a commercial airplane. But can you do the opposite? Can you take a commercial airplane and make it fly like an F-16? No, of course not. Because this will prevent you from doing it. The aircraft itself cannot move that fast. So although you give a lot of input from here, it will just not respond. Because I don't care. You can give any input to me. I will not follow because I cannot. Okay? So you cannot make a slow airplane faster, but you could make a fast responding airplane responds slower, right? And, this is kind of what we're doing here. and remember, it is not always slowing down the input. It is removing the high frequencies. In other words, if you give a high frequency input like that, <coughs> you follow slowly. Okay? However, if you give a slow input, the low pass filter will not change. It will actually look like this red line. So it, it, don't think that if you give a slow input, this is YC. Don't think that YC prime would look like that. Unless we have a really terrible command filter, it might look like this. But it will not slow it down. Because this is a slow response, if you do it right, your YC prime should actually look like that. Do you understand the concept? 
sure. I think I missed the point, but uh, we are thinking about the dynamics of the system. So if I give such an input, my system will uh, show an output just like my local by local. Mm -hmm. So why am I uh, designing it? Like just to remove the uh, computational uh, things? Or yeah, it's not. Comp well, he's saying, why are we designing this? If I give a step input, I can slow it down over here. And yes, there's no high low pass filter, but it will still be going over here, like we did in Wednesday. I, I gave a step input, and we still went to the steady state in a manner which was as fast as I can manner. Right? The, 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 the close loop response was trying to match the step input as fast as it could. So that's number one. If we try to go there as fast as it can, do you want to go there as fast as you can? Maybe not. It's like you have a car and you are it, you're standing on the street and I tell you, go 100 km per second. What are you going to do? Step input, 100 km per second, you see a big error, you go, mm, okay. maximum speed, but mm, mm, you go to 100 km. I said, slow down, but I don't want to go this fast. Just go slowly to 100 km. Make it comfortable. If you're a robot, you'll ask me, how comfortable? What is comfortable to you? I said, I go in 15 seconds. Ah, you want this. When you tell me to go 100 km per second, what you really want is this. Yes, that's what I want. I don't want you to do this. Okay? If you give a step input, the, the, the airplane will try to do that as fast as it can. But you don't want that. You want to go slowly there. Understand my first point? Okay? That's my first point. No, wait. This is my first point. The second point is when you give a step input, the control that will go into the system will be maximum. Right? So if you want to have a pitch input, immediately the elevators go maximum, go maximum like that. Okay? And you have a lot, and this is too much. You don't want to do that. Right? And maybe then you overshoot because you're going too fast. And then you oscillate. And you think, oh I need to tune my controller. Well you don't need to tune your controller, you need to play with your command. Your command is silly because everybody knows a step input cannot be followed. Right? So, here's a, here's a, when, you, when you design your controllers, you will see, if you design a fast controller, okay, a, a, an agile controller, and you give a step input, you will, you will start to go to as fast as possible, and then you will see overshoots and oscillations, and then you will say, oh, okay, I need to change these ones. But what you really do is you slow down or take away the bandwidth of your controller, which means the controller now is not fast anymore. It is a sluggish, you call it, not so good controller. But the problem was not here. It was actually here. You were giving a step input, which doesn't work. Okay? So, when you see this large error over here, let's say you are giving a step input here, you will see a large error in your, in your signal. When you multiply with K, you will see a large input to this. And suddenly, at the very first second, you will see a step input going into the control system. And the elevator will go boom. Okay? And then you go like, up like this, and then you overshoot and then you play on it. You don't want that. Just slow down your control. Understand my point? So although at the end you go all to the same point, it kind of shapes how you go there. We call it the transient response. Okay? This part is called the transient response. How do you go there? Transient response. And this part here we call the steady state response. Everybody is concerned about the steady state. Are we going to that place where we want to go? Yes, but how do you go there? Is it painful or is it smooth? <coughs> So this is kind of allowing you to go there smooth with an input that actually makes sense to your aircraft. Because we know your aircraft cannot do this. It can only do that. And moreover, you can actually shape this now to make your airplane go even slower than it's supposed to go there. How slower? All the way to it. You don't have to go there with your maximum power. As fast as you can is not necessarily the answer. 
Therefore, we can shape the way that the airplane falls. It is silly to give an input over here that your aircraft cannot follow. If you cannot follow, why are you giving that input? You cannot tell this exactly to the pilot if you, make, if you want to make his life easier. You can tell him, give whatever input you want. Then I smooth it out to an input that the aircraft can actually follow. Or that people would like to see how fast it can go. You cannot make a slow airplane faster than its maximum speed or velocity or angle or whatever. But you can slow it down. You can make it a smooth airplane, smooth ride. Same thing with your car, as I said. When I go to 100 kilometers per hour, you can go there as fast as you can. And who wants that? Why are you not doing that? Why do you want to have a comfort? What's your comfort zone? We call it a comfort zone, right? It's a comfort zone. Well, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, 15 seconds is okay. So you smooth it out. In your brain, you want to go 100 kilometers per hour. In your brain, say, let's go there slow, comfortably. So you're filtering your command already in your brain and giving a slow input. You want to go here, but never give a step input to your car. You're doing this already. Okay. So you could say, okay, I remove the low pass filter and tell the pilot, wherever you want to go, go slowly. Of course you can do that. But as I said, in an Airbus helicopter, an airplane, for example. So let's say you want to say to change altitude. You have a knob, you turn it, and you can say enter. So it's effectively giving a set input. And then the airplane will slowly go to the altitude. Well, there's a huge low pass filter there that takes the airplane slowly to the place. You might think that I can do every, you can give a step input over here and do everything in the controller. But that's silly, you don't have to. The job of the controller is something else. The job of this is to stabilize. This is to follow. But you can only follow something that you can do. You cannot tell an airplane to go to change 5,000 feet in two seconds. So a passenger airplane needs to do like this. It cannot do it. So why give that input? So you can shape that input over here before it actually goes into the controller. That's what I'm saying. And then everything looks good to the controller. You go slowly there. The airplane can follow it. And you design these controllers for that particular input so that you don't go fast, you don't go slow. So filters, especially low-pass filters, are used in all control systems everywhere, okay? We have a lot of low-pass filters in our control systems, in airplanes, in any control system, okay? So I just wanted to show you one example of one most commonly used low-pass filter, called sometimes a reference model, command filter, sometimes the model following it because you're following the model of the command. So what does it look like and how do we design it? What do we have to do? Thank you.